everybody looks like we are live welcome to another wednesday we made it and i hope everyone is having a good week so far here we are for part three of painting the portrait of the beautiful talented uh sinead o'connor so i'm really excited about that and let's see who we have today mr roy color graphics all the way from new jersey how are you sir always a pleasure to see you uh looking forward to uh working on that portrait together uh and so that's going to be great uh roy and i are going to be working on a uh, portrait using createx illustration paints hey mr gregory how are you today all the way from oklahoma how's everything it's great to see you thank you so much for hanging out today uh and mr gregory we're doing part three uh, of the portrait of the beautiful, talented Sinead O'Connor. And uh, so I'm glad to be able to share that with you all. So that's that's really cool. And we're going to be using, of course, the uh, Wicked Colors by Createx. Uh, a lot of fun. I've, I've enjoyed it thus far. You see, we've gotten pretty far, you know, and we're just going to keep uh, keep pushing along. We might use some uh, paintbrush techniques uh, with this, you know, to do some of the details, maybe some of the little hairs here. Oh, in Kansas right now. Oh, very cool. I was reading about Wichita, how it's uh, very affordable in Wichita. Are you near there, sir? Mr. Dwayne Marshall, how are you today, sir? Always a pleasure to see you. That is so great. So, uh, Mr. Marshall is... Uh, from California, San Luis Obispo, and uh, that is Mustangs and not Banana Slugs. So very cool, and always a pleasure to see you, Mr. Marshall. So Dave says that his hairstyle and uh, is the same as uh, as uh, Sinead O'Connor. Okay, so you're going with the buzz cut. Very cool. Very cool. Mr. Michael McClung, how are you today? All the way from Maryland. Great to see you. So glad you're here. And ah, thank you, Dwayne. Doing okay. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So thanks for looking out. Also, oh, Dave says he is from north. He's right now north of Kansas City, but spent a weekend in Wichita a few weeks ago. I hear it's a good place. I was one of the ten top ten cheapest or least expensive places to live. Uh, so I heard good things about Wichita. I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is it big in the pharmaceutical uh, sector? I was doing some research around the country. Mr. Brad Mummery, all the way from Manitoba, Canada. Great to see you. How are you, sir? So glad you're here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brad and I are working on a portrait in oils together, and he is just doing amazing. Very talented guy. So very cool. Oh, aviation. Yes. Okay. Yes, because uh, I have a friend who lives in Oklahoma City, and it, aviation's there as well. Are you in the aviation sector, sir? So I have this, and now let's see if I, do I have a picture of Sinead? Let's see. Nope, that's not. Let me see if I can bring that picture of Sinead O'Connor up for you guys. Uh, so cool. And let's see. So I'm going to add a picture so you can see uh, what I'm working uh, with. Let's see, where is she? Here we go. Beautiful picture of her. Let me put that right here. Great. Mr. Rick Lada, great to see you from Canada. How's everything? Happy Wednesday to you too, sir. So glad you're here. Got a really great group today. So I'm really very happy. Now, let's see. I'm going to get my reference using Pure Ref. If you haven't used Pure Ref before, it's really amazing. Just a lot of fun to work with. Let's see, right over here. 
Okay. Wow, Michael says that the portrait's looking awesome. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Mr. McLung. That is uh, a wonderful to hear. It's always good to have encouragement from you guys. So I appreciate that a lot because I respect your opinion so much. So let me go get some of the wicked colors that I'm going to need. So let's see, they're over here. So I'm just going to start migrating a lot of these colors over here. So today I'm going to be uh, basically enriching some of the darks here, coming in a little bit deeper in the darks, and that will actually help me to deepen some of the mid-tones. And then we're going to do some paintbrush action here, which is going to be great. And the airbrushes we'll be using is the Extreme Patriot uh, customized by myself, the Arrow, and we are also going to be using the 105. So both customized by myself and works really well with the Wicked paints. Uh, we'll be using the Wicked Detail and the regular Wicked. And I'm just going to bring a whole bunch over here. Let's see. And we will be going in with some paintbrush techniques as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go get a, uh, as you know, it's so important to have a scrap piece of paper. So at pretty much the same color that you can check and make sure that you're getting the right spray patterns. Wow, Mr. Gregory, thank you so much for the Super Chat sticker. That is really amazing. Your generosity and friendship is really important to me. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's really great, uh, Dave. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It really, really helps out and just uh, relieves a lot of the stress. So thank you so much for that, sir. I really appreciate it. I, I rejoice in your friendship, sir. And Brad says, how do you like the Wicked Paint with the Extreme Arrow? You know, it really is nice. I mean, it, it has a 0 .30 needle nozzle combination. So uh, it goes through a lot, right? And I water it down or dilute it with the 4011, probably like one to one. And I don't have any problem. I could stay at 25 PSI. And so it really is great. And Dave says, uh, thanks for sharing your talent with us. The honor is all mine, sir. Thank you, Dave. Guys, I'm going to go get my scrap paper and then we'll jump right into this. So something like this is great to have, you know, very similar in texture and color. So when I have a, you know, I'm testing, make sure my airbrush is working well. And I'm, Ryan, how are you? Great to see you. Uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Always an honor to see you. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Ryan, where are you from once more? I always like to know where my friends are from. Give you guys a shout out, you know. And we have Travis, Shine Customs. How's it going from Minnesota? Great to see you. So glad you're here. Oh, great. You caught up in the last uh, piece you did was really beautiful, sir. So that's fantastic. Ah, thanks, Roy. Roy giving you a welcome. So that's wonderful. I appreciate that, Roy. Great group today. Really great. Okay, so let's see. So if we are going to work on Sinead a little bit, let's put the stencil where we cover the background. Not that I don't want to get an... Oh, Vancouver, Canada. We got three Canadians in the house today. Very cool. Love my Canadian friends. So it's not that I am worried about uh, messing up the background because I really aren't uh, it's basically I want to keep those beautiful edges right 
and so that's so important to keep those edges uh, you know work so hard to have these edges and it would be a shame to lose them so it's a lot about value and edges and keeping that and uh, you know just making sure we don't lose it and that's why I like having these uh, these stencils that are cut with the Cameo 4 they really make a big difference so I have this background stencil here and this way it'll cover it and we don't have to worry about you know losing our contours so let's see uh, and then I also use magnets you know on top of a piece of metal uh, which you can buy this piece of metal for like eighteen dollars and then these magnets are real inexpensive mr. Brad thank you for the super chat my friend that is so amazing thank you so much sir that means so much and I appreciate your friendship and uh, and I appreciate your support sir thank you so very much it's really amazing sir uh, you guys are all so great to uh, take time out on your busy day and to hang out there's so much going on 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 uh, YouTube right now and it's an honor that you just you guys decide to hang out with me and support uh, you know the channel and it just is amazing I don't take it lightly that's for sure so one of the things is is that when you have these high uh, these high magnets you want to make sure that they're not too high where they cast a shadow onto your artwork and that's not good because you might think that there's a dark there and there really isn't it's a shadow so at when that happens it's good to use these lower lower profile magnets they work much better and it doesn't cause that whole problem of of casting a shadow on your work so I'm looking to make sure that I cover I don't because if I don't cover it, it's gonna change my contour and that's not good so I have to kind of line this up but once I line it up, if I could hold it there, then I could just kind of follow that contour. Let's see. This looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is really worry about one side at a time. And this way I'll make sure that I have the contour correctly. Otherwise, if I don't, it's uh, you know it's just gonna take a long time to get it uh, these things shift and you know with working on it and painting on it these stencils could shift and uh, I don't want that to happen I don't want it to affect my art so what I'm really gonna concentrate on is her hairline and this side so let's just make sure that this is correct by her ear Now what's cool about this side, since there's a light over to camera left, it'll cast a shadow but away from the artwork. So I could use these higher profile magnets on this side. And just right here, coming over. okay so now what I want to do is deepen this dark because if I'm looking at uh, my reference of Sinead it's a little bit deeper here so I'm going to come darker now I'm seeing uh, raw umber I'm seeing some some burnt sienna and let's see if we can I have all these cups these mixing cups that you get over at uh, at Walmart and I'm going to make sure I have a whole bunch of them because I'm probably going to use about 10 tonight. I don't save the Wicked Paint, you know. Uh, what I use, I basically, I discard after, after the session. Okay, so, all right. So now my goal is to mix this dark color, which is 
on her cheek, uh, right next to her ear. So basically, that's where we want to we want to kind of get that color. So let's see. Make this a little bit over here. Okay. So the first color I'm looking at, I'm thinking the uh, kind of like this detail sepia, which is really nice. When sepia is concentrated, it's really like a, a dull, dark brown, so that's good. Uh, so Travis says that he uses uh, some lights and some soft boxes over them. Really nice to paint lighting. Oh yeah, definitely. The soft boxes are really great, definitely. I agree, sir. And Travis says, uh, lots of hours. Oh, yeah, so working lots of hours. Well, your work is paying off, sir. That's for sure. So as you see, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this. And it's very close to the color already, right? I don't think I want to go much richer than that, right? So what I like to do is uh, use the 4011, and I have it in a separate bottle. And I'm going to go one-to-one -one with the 4011 and, and the sepia color here. And I'm going to go ahead. I have a palette knife. You could use the, anything for it. But I'm going to mix away from my painting. I'm going to mix this up. I may add some of this uh, really cool transparent black called Smoke which is a, a detail color with Createx Quicket Paints. See, right now, that's pretty close to what I'm looking for. And that's the only tricky, tricky thing, though. It looks close here, but when you spray it, it might be different. Dennis, how's it going? Look, it's great to see you. Oh, yes, so the Cameo 4 and uh, and more magnets, that would be great. The Cameo 4 is amazing. Uh, I use it with Krita, and uh, you're able to do just some, you know, really helps support your artwork and helps you do the best work possible. So as you see, I have that, and, and have lots of paper towels. The paper towels I like using are the Viva the cloth style they're really good so I'm gonna take my extreme Patriot arrow and we're just going to pour a little bit in there I want this to be transparent super super transparent so at this time I'm not gonna add some 50, any 50 50 I just want it to be very transparent on top so it's always great to see you Dennis how's life over in the Dallas Texas area and this is where the, the test paper comes in. That's pretty close to what I'm looking for. But let's see if it deepens the color. Uh, it may, it may not. I may have to add some of that, uh, that smoke. Oh no, that's looking really good. That's exactly what I wanted. So I want to pay attention to the anatomy as I do this. And also I want to make sure I have the magnets right close to the edge so I don't get any underspray. Underspray is no fun. And at this late stage of the painting, you definitely don't want underspray. And you see I'm deepening this uh, shadow of the zygomatic bone or the jaw bone as it comes down. And then as you get this kind of shadow coming here that's caused by the the space between the zygomatic bone and the mandible or jaw bone now working on this is really going to pull out the uh, the uh, the likeness of Sinead because she does have the very high cheekbone here which is uh, this is when she was very young and we were young. We're all so skinny and everything. Colette, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out all the way from Wisconsin. Thank you so much for the super chat sticker. It means so much and I appreciate you and your friendship 
and I appreciate your support and uh, thank you so much and that means the world to me so thank you thank you thank you Colette you guys are all so amazing uh, you know I look forward to Wednesday nights you if you knew how much I look forward to hanging out with you guys uh, I really do so today I'm using this uh, really if you're doing flesh and you want to go ahead and and darken some of the areas I really really hope that you pick up some of the 0070 is a designation and it's detail sepia it's really really great and you could see how at this late stage of the game how it just works to to darken uh, some of these features oh thank you so much Colette says you rock I appreciate that thank you Colette and you see how as we deepen this we're really pulling out some of the the beautiful likeness of Sinead and uh, you know and that's what I'm hoping hoping to get and so we can actually take this sepia and of course I I mix this sepia with the 4011 one to one and uh, you don't lose any of the one to one I really love because you don't lose any of the uh, power of the color but it flows through this airbrush at 25 psi just really nicely so a lot of people will ask so Tim why did you choose wicked paint why didn't you go with illustration which I have experience with illustration but I wanted to do something that uh, embraces the the abilities of of wicked paint and I like the idea of of working with a paint that leads itself to working with automotive to working on guitars to working on goalie helmets and also standard easel painting and I want to kind of bridge that gap between the two so I hope I can do that oh that's so cool so Colette says make sure everyone hits that like button thank you and thank you again for that super chat uh, that that super chat sticker that is so great thank you thank you thank you uh, really amazing so as I'm working here, Sinead or anyone you're painting, uh, there is a hairline on the top of our heads, but there's also a hairline uh, from the sideburns. And that's what I'm working on right now. So I have to make sure that I get that correctly. And I'm just pumping that trigger as I'm working. And I'm looking at this space between her eyebrow and the sideburn here and it gets real close right here and just pumping that trigger and here is where overspray you do want a little bit of it because you know our hair is growing and everything like that and it's soft at the edges and then also looking at her hairline it's a little more her eyebrow is a little more broad towards this area here and again these little things are the things that really go a long way in getting the likeness when you're doing a portrait but a likeness really is something you don't worry about a likeness happens when you work work on all the fundamentals and that's what we want to do we want to work on all those fundamentals and then everything sort of comes together I'm about three inches away and I'm hitting and moving, right? I'm not staying in that same area because if I do, more paint's going to go into that area. It's going to, it's going to uh, basically oversaturate. You're going to get spidering and just not good. And then you can see how her hairline very lightly almost touches the temporal ridge here. It almost touches right here and then goes up. 
Remember, you can always go darker, but if you go too dark, it's going to be a, a really a heck of a time trying to go lighter. So we'll just continue this. And of course, I did this uh, over one of my India ink underpaintings using the detail mixture and the light mixture. There we go. And then, so this, this sepia is really good because it's working with the values that are already there and just darkening those values and the color. So it's a great, it's a great uh, thing to use at the later stage when you're kind of doing the finishing touches of your portrait. And it's a one-to-one -one mixture, so I'm getting really good flow. If you look here on this test paper, you can see I'm getting India ink flow, which is really nice, right? Uh, the underpainting does give a huge edge, Brad, de Brad, definitely, because I don't have to make those, those decisions, you know, of, you know, line and texture and value. Uh, that's pretty much made for me in the early going. So very true, sir. Very true. So now I can come in on the lower eyelid and kind of darken this. And I may have to come in with a little bit of burnt sienna and kind of uh, glaze over that to give a little more life to the shadow under here. But we'll, that's to be determined. Oh, I think this is working out really well. So definitely uh, in the later stage of the game. So once again, this is the uh, Detail Sepia. I don't recommend it straight out of the tube, straight out of the bottle. I do that one-to-one -one with the 4011, never the 4012. Uh-uh, stay away from the 4012. And uh, if you need, if you're working on a car or something, then add just a little drop. Uh, of the 4050 and that will increase adhesion which is really fantastic so definitely uh, love that color and I use that color when I work in oils as well right here the shadow kind of connects with the eyebrow As you can see, by deepening the shadows of her zygomatic bone and the cheekbone, and then coming over here and deepening the shadow uh, where the eye socket is, we're starting to get that expression, you know, that intangible of our, of our subject, right? And that's important. But definitely the sepia is working out really well. Did you all catch uh, Mr. Steve Leahy's live stream where he uh, used the paintbrush techniques? It's really fantastic. If you haven't, I believe it's recorded on his YouTube channel. And uh, just fantastic. Catch him on his YouTube channel, uh, his Facebook channel, 6 o'clock on, on Monday nights. And he goes over all these different techniques. And on Monday, he went over the eye. I think it was on a uh, pedal, guitar pedal or something like that. I'm not a musician, so forgive me for that. But really fantastic. He went over working with Wicked and uh, very informative and in how he came in with the paintbrush using the Wicked paint as well. And it was extremely informative. I was there taking notes, you know, uh, taking notes while I was working. And we can see how this dark comes up. So we're going to intense the dark on the side of her. And we just worked on her eye. And we're, kind of, we're going to come back here. I like moving around and not staying in one area. And then I'm going to come and enrich this dark. And as I do that, some of the uh, mid-tones... I could go ahead and darken them and just create a really uh, 
a really fine art portrait, right? And using the wicked and taking the wicked and showing the, the capabilities of it. So Dwayne says he likes to use the detail line of the wicked. Yeah, aren't they great? They're really amazing, Dwayne. Yeah, I find they're a little more transparent. Are you finding that too, Dwayne? I'm new to Wicked, but uh, I know you are much more versed in the medium. So, uh, do you find that the Wicked, uh, Dwayne, the, the detail Wicked is a little more transparent than the regular? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And anyone else who uses uh, Wicked paints, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know what you like what line they have the detail wicked line the regular wicked line and the opaque and what are your thoughts on it and Dwayne says finer ground pigments and yes it's more transparent thank you sir so yeah so definitely the way that they grind the pigments in when they uh, mix the paint that's fascinating so yeah I definitely feel it right you can feel it when you're painting uh, so I definitely, definitely agree there. So I'm glad that, that we have the same, ex uh, same experience with the paint. You, my friend, are a master using this stuff. So I really appreciate you being here. And as you can see, as I deepen this, it's really going to go a long way of lightening these values and then I can deepen these values and make for a much more richer painting and that's important and I want to come into her lower lip work on her lower lip that's something I want to work on today deepen some of these values in her trapezius I don't like saying the neck area because it really isn't a neck area it's a series of anatomical forms we have the trapezius the sternocleidomastoid and the tracheal area that's the neck so I don't like saying that because there's individual forms and saying the neck is too much of a generic term for the forms and Dwayne says the detail line works better for finer needles oh very cool so and I like to work at a lower PSI right so that's probably why I enjoy the, the detail line so much I definitely um, now you see I was working on just this side getting the contour on this side so I'm going to adjust this you know very cool yeah Brad that is great information from Dwayne so very very cool sir So with this, it's so important that I get the contours correct, right? And don't mess my contours. That means I would have to repaint the contours and everything, redraw it, so it's important. Wow, look at that. So Dwayne runs at 15 to 20 PSI. Wow, that's really low. That is so cool. And you use, of course, the 4011, right? Oh, Mr. Dwayne, uh, Mr. Dave, have a great night, my friend, from... Kansas this evening have a great night and I want to thank you for your uh, super chat donation it means the world to me sir and uh, and uh, one of these days I got to get out to uh, Kansas to visit you <laughs> I hear great things about Kansas and uh, take care of yourself and I hope to see you next week sir and thanks again Dave for your friendship thank you so very cool and so Dwayne says that the, in the details, it'll drop down to below 10. Wow. That's what I do with the India ink. So that's the, that's impressive. That's You really know the paint when you can go down with the PSI like that. That is, that is super impressive. Uh, really nice. So I'm going to adjust the contour here because I want to go on this side of the of the hair and the face. So I'm going to move this temporarily and I'll come back because I, I do want to bring some of this sepia color over here. Let's see. 
And take care, Dave. Always a pleasure, sir. And let's see. I'm just going to make sure I get this correct. I'm, so I'm working on the hairline. You see how by, you know, concentrating on one area at a time, I maintain this beautiful uh, contour. And that contour is so important on, you know, getting the emotion of the pose. A lot of people say it's in the eyes. It is, but it's so much more than that, right? It's so much more. And Dwayne says he'll reduce to 5 to 10 uh, using the detail line when doing fine detail. That is just incredible that you said that. That is just amazing. And it's encouraging that I can go ahead and push it to that, right? Because I like working in the India inks that I made, you know, that my airbrush India ink. So that's right up my alley. Okay, so we'll put this and once again, uh, I am working on uh, on this 90 pound paper that I put a layer of shellac over my India ink underpainting. And I'm not going to worry about down here right now. I'm just concentrating on up here. And I don't see any use for using the sepia, so I'm just going to stick to right here. So this is where I'm going to make sure that I mass my, amass my, my magnets to the edge there. Uh, let's see. So always do a test. And again, getting that Airbrush India ink look and the control beautiful so once again this sepia if you don't have it pick it up i mean it is really good it's going to be i'm going to be getting a big bottle of this trust me let me get some water uh just to hydrate myself here so the great thing about the wicked line this could be on a guitar. This could be uh, on anything, on on a motorcycle, because that's what the Wicked paints are are for. So that's why I I like working in the Wicked because of the versatility. And like I said, I want to bridge that gap from easel painting to custom work, right? To show that you could use the paint in any way that you want any style we're not limited and so i like showing different sides of the medium okay so now we're just going to work on the darkening the outer edge of her of her hair and the contour of her head and and you notice that I like the hit and move. Hit and move is so important because you don't oversaturate, you don't spider, and you build up that value slowly. Can oh, and then always try and and push these magnets through. You know who else is really good? Scott McKay has a great live stream down in Dirty Tricks. He is on when uh, Thursday nights, and he's on YouTube. And he did a really amazing thing. He used these uh, stencils to do the flag on on different skulls. And the way he, he did it was just very masterful. So it was really cool. So check him out. Uh, he also uses the Wicked Wine. So definitely check him out. I think you all will really enjoy his work. And also, I have to worry about the hairline, right? That's so important. Dwayne says he uses a lot of different ones of airbrushes. Uh, here is a list of his detail brushes. Oh, look at that. My airbrush. Uh, the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Thank you, sir. The Daikumi Micron. The B Micron. The C Micron. Along with a few Sotar 2020s that he customized. Uh, and then the Han Solo 0.5 and the Creo 771. That is quite a great list of airbrushes. Really cool. 
Great question, Brad. Asked, uh, asked uh, Mr. Dwayne what airbrush he uses when using the Pre-Apex Wicked Detail line. And again, pumping that trigger, it does two things. It keeps it light. Wow, Dennis, thank you so much for that Super Chat sticker. That is really amazing. Uh, $20, that is very, very generous. And I really appreciate your friendship and hanging out. And if you have any questions about getting the Cameo 4, you just email me or message me and I'll, I'll help you get what you need and, and how to do it. So don't worry about that. That would be great. And thank you so much, sir, for the Super Chat sticker. And you guys, your friendship and support is really, really important. And uh, you always, always... Uh, blow me over you guys with your generosity and friendship and hanging around with me on a wednesday night like i said there's so many great youtubers out there and the fact that you guys spend wednesday night with me is just like through the roof encouraging so thank you sir so thank you dennis that is so cool so you guys are really just blowing me over today and so now we have to worry about the hairline here. And that's something that I did not uh, work with the pencil. So I have to be very careful. And we can see that the hairline goes this way and kind of recedes right here. And then, but I have to make sure that I get up close and I kind of create that texture of of her very short hair here. And of course this is very thinned out so it really helps to get in there. And at 25 PSI I'm not getting too much of the spidering. But here I may come in with paintbrush techniques but I'm not sure. I think the airbrush is doing a pretty good job at it with this kind of texture. Making sure I'm not getting any kind of overs overspray, you know. And so uh, Ryan asks, which is your favorite, uh, Dwayne? So they're asking, uh, which is uh, the favorite airbrush? And... Let's see. Oh, also, Dwayne said the Harder and Steenbeck sold. Oh, a Harder and Steenbeck. Cool. Very cool. And let's see. And okay. So, Dwayne says, as far as his favorite, uh, the Micron C, the 0.23 tip, and the other Microns, the 18. And the 15 all spray, excellent. Wow, so you're doing like 10 PSI with the 0.15 Harder and Steenbeck. That's unbelievable. That's saying a lot about what Createx is doing. It really is. So get yourself a little test paper that's very similar to what you're working on. And, and always see what kind of spray you're getting, right? Uh, because we may not know or, or get the full idea when working on a painting that, you know, that's already like, you know, 80% done. Now, when I'm working on hair, I want to make sure that not only do I get where those hairs are, but the direction. The direction, I think, is even more important because if you get the direction wrong, it's not going to describe the form of her skull, and that's important. And little by little, we'll get there. And that's what we're looking for, that texture. And I'm going to, uh, I'll leave the size of, uh, but in my reference, I want to really blow up what's happening here. So I'm going to lower my PSI or my air pressure on the pack valve. 
and this way I can get in close which is really important and you want to make sure when you're doing these little hairs that you're not equidistant in the same size uh, you want that kind of uh, randomness that is in nature Very little thing, you know, the texture of the hair, especially with Sinead and the, the buzz cut, but it will add to the realism and will add to the authenticity of the piece. So that's very important. And Dwayne says that uh, my custom Patriot rocks the wicked line with the best of them. Also love that brush. Thank you, sir. That's a wonderful testimony. Yeah, you know, I was kind of afraid. Uh, because I use these only for the uh, Airbrush India inks. And I was afraid, what's the Wicked going to do? But I'm very happy the way that the, the Extreme Patriot Arrow holds up to the Wicked. Uh, very, very. Uh, and so I just know when I'm working with the light colors, I just, you know, like any airbrush, I just clean it out really well. And that seems to, you know, and it doesn't lose any of its detail. It doesn't uh, lose any of its ability to work with the inks. So thank you, Dwayne, for that. I appreciate it. Because I was, like, really nervous. Like, how is it going to react to this new line of paint that I haven't used before? So it, it seemed to do the job. So that was cool. And it passed with playing colors. And uh, so Brad said he was told by a paint dealer not to use the Wicked with his custom Micron. Yeah, that was not a... Yeah, so I heard about that. Uh, a salesperson said that to Brad. And that's not true, you know. The, the Micron will work well with the Wicked. And thanks for that, that testimony of, you know that it works well with those real small nozzle airbrushes. That's great. So you don't lose the ability to use those really great brushes with this. I may come in with a little bit of a darker color in the hairline, but that's to be determined. If we need it, we will. Am I running low? I'm running a little low. Let's see. And just pulling this over. Okay. And I'm going to come in at a later, later today or tomorrow and put in some darker hairs here and there. But I'm really liking how this uh, sepia is really uh, up for the challenge, you know. Uh, Brad says, Tim, give your thoughts on the frequency of cleaning the airbrush. You know, there's a lot of different uh, things of cleaning the airbrush. I always want to make sure, and it served me well so far, is that the nozzle in there is cleaned out. And with the Extreme Patriot Arrow, it has that large nozzle. So I take that out and make sure that's completely clean after every painting session. So great question, sir. And Dwayne says, so regular Wicked has a bigger shear and the pigments, so it can have a tendency to clog more and strain the paint and reduce correctly, and you can spray it just as fine. Great, great advice, sir. Yeah, so definitely strain it, and uh, so that's great. And because of any kind of larger pigments that may get in and, uh, you know, attack the smaller micron nozzles. So great, great information. Just amazing information. Okay, and then I'm going to stick with the hair because the hair, when it's darker, is going to affect the shadow planes and then the mid-tones. It's going to have a domino effect. So I'm going to work on her hair just a little bit more. You know, a lot of the areas where we might say is a minor area really isn't because 
it's it's all like everything affects everything else like the butterfly effect in physics right the idea that a butterfly flapping its wing in florida can cause a uh a really big storm in california right so everything affects everything in a portrait and kind of like walking that tightrope and then right here it gets a little bit darker i'm just gonna hit this i have to remember so doing this detail in the hair i lowered the psi you have to remember and make that mental note to bring that psi back up or in this case using the pack valve you're basically restricting the airflow and giving the impression of a lower psi and uh so uh Dwayne says so regular wick oh about the regular wicked very cool that is great info sir great great info so yeah it's uh i learned just as much from you guys as you guys from me <laughs> that's for sure and so i i kind of like the way the hairline is going and let's see if we can deepen the side plane of the nasal bones the upper lateral cartilage and maybe some of the alar cartilage and see if we can do that and then i want to really work on her lips and notice i'm not doing any kind of scratching or anything like that it's just basically painting uh, i tend to shy away from that just for personal preference since being an oil painter i'd rather paint it in than scratch it out but that's just me not better not worse just just me what I'm comfortable of doing all these years, you know, I'm an old guy, <laughs> but I feel young. Okay, great. So let's take this detail mixture. And again, I'm going to raise that PSI a little bit because I'm not doing that detail of the hair right now. And I'm about three inches away. So why am I further away? because then I could gradually darken it you know as I'm moving I could be much more subtle and see if that's what I'm looking to do if not then you know nothing ventured nothing gained so lowering that psi being about two and a half to three inches away if I'm closer then what's going to happen is I'm going to get that dark you know and I don't want that dark because like I said I don't erase so I would have to come in with the white and orange mixture. And let's go ahead and continue to make this happen. There we go. And it just comes down a little bit here. And the sepia just works with the colors that I was painting underneath. And uh, it really is a, a very nice effect. And whenever I work in another area, always come in and work on here and see, you can really see what your airbrush is doing. You know, if it's not working right, you want to find out on your scrap paper, you don't want to find out on your airbrush, right? I mean, on your painting, especially when you're far along like I am. So it's like, here's your laboratory to, laboratory to do your test, and this is where you execute your, your plan, so... Keep that in mind. And even when you're working in custom, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to see if everything's working out on your actual motorcycle or guitar or something like that. And that's really cool. Uh, so great information, Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne has been doing. Uh, automotive paint for a long long time so he's definitely somebody who has a wealth of knowledge and someone like me who has studied uh, classically in oil paints and pastel uh, in graphite I bring a different skill set and that's it, you know, we all have different skill sets and we could learn from one another and really take this airbrush thing to the next level. And that's what we're all striving for, that next level. We don't get there right away, but, you know, little by little, we just, we get these little plateaus and get to that next level. And that's what I hope for, for you guys, hope for me is to just, you know, maybe we could push each other to get to that next level. And in that next level is more opportunities, right? And that's that's what we're 
more opportunities to make money, more opportunities to share, more opportunities to inspire one another, and just see where it takes us artistically as well. So very cool. And so I'm deepening the eye socket area. And then so deepening actually will help bring out the retro, uh, the retro opicularis uh, oculi fat pad right here, which is between the upper eyelid, the crease of the upper eyelid and the eyebrow. On the outside is this fat compartment. And inside the corner of the eye, there is no fat compartment and it gets much darker. So notice like when you're looking at people, it's darker on the corner of the eye in the eye socket and then it gets like a fatty compartment over here on the outside and that's that fat fat compartment so i bring that kind of skill set to the airbrush world and i love i love sharing that because it takes it takes uh, other artists work to that next level so i definitely like sharing that and uh, that's what we all need you know to you know I bring something to the table, Dwayne brings, Brad, uh, Ryan, you know, and goes down the line. We all bring something to the table, our experiences, everything, Dennis, and, and together we could really make our work that much better. So right here we have the Alar fat, no, the Alar cartilage. Alar means butterfly in Latin. And so we have a cartilage here on this nose that comes out and it's symmetrical and it's a butterfly shape on the ball of the nose. And so whenever you see this little uh, ridge there, that's the alar cartilage and it's symmetrical. What you see on this side is on that side for the most part, not always. Again, I just, I took a little tiny break so I wanna make sure that so yeah, for the first hour, I'm working with this uh, sepia color and it's really working out, you know, it's no less uh, of a rich painting, so. So definitely hitting that Alar cartilage right there. So good distance and moving is going to keep you from having it blotchy, right? So always keep that in mind. Moving and then distance. So moving when you're working, having a good distance, and that's going to make our values super soft and our edges very soft. And when you're painting a woman, those are very important elements. And Brad says, what is the best wicked for textiles? I think Roy has a good, he's good at that as well working on uh, t-shirts and stuff. Um, so I believe the original Wicked, uh, the, uh, the regular Wicked is probably the best, but Roy probably knows better than that with that information on t-shirts. But I, I've seen uh, Jen Mayberry do something really nice with uh, using the Wicked line. Uh, on a t-shirt very nice so it, it sprayed nicely it had nice adhesion so yeah the wicked line works great with t-shirts uh, oh Dwayne says he uses a 190 micron mesh to strain his paints he cuts a two inch uh, square and screws them under the cap of the paint bottle wow look at that and always wipe the bottle look at that so it's attached to your bottle and you just pour it so keeps you from not straining the paint. That is really wild. That's a great technique. Wow. That is so fantastic. Yeah, because Dwayne has uh, so much experience. And what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So that's where, you know, he comes up with that information, which is practical and effective. Let me pull this over. So I darkened this value here, this side plane. And right here on top of the nostril, we have a little bit of a shadow here. 
more of a cast shadow than a form shadow there. There we go, just evening that out a little bit. And let's see. Okay, right here on the corner of her upper lip. And that was something we did in the group class uh, with my students is we were talking about some of the muscles in the face. So in the face, we have these muscles here on each side on the corner of the mouth. It's called the depressa anguli oris. And let me see if I could show that real quick. Uh, it's worth showing because I think if you know it's there, guys, you're going to look for it, and you're going to see the subtlety of it. And you definitely could mix that. Oh, Roy says when he does t-shirts, he shoots right at a bottle at 55 to 60 PSI. That's great information. Thank you. And what airbrush do you use, Roy, when you're doing t-shirts? So that's great information. He knows a lot about t-shirts. That's for sure. He's been doing it for years and years. So now we have this and uh okay we're going to bring in that anatomical illustration so let's see go here and let's see so i am looking i believe it's in my f drive no my g drive and there's anatomy and let's see so I'm looking for something that has the oppressor depressor angulite oris here it is I guess this I think this would work guys let's see open okay great so now we can see that all these different muscles so I want you to look on the corner I can't really show you in this program a point to it but right at the corner of the mouth there's this muscle that kind of pulls down and the name of it called the depressor anguli or oris and what that does it pulls down the corners of the mouth to create a frown but when it's relaxed it's uh it has enough mass to have the ever slightest uh shadow and the shadow is usually a very light gray and so look for that and you can see on camera right uh, right on the corner of the eye is this muscle that comes right down from the corner of the mouth and of course there's one on the left and one on the right and it's called the depressa depressor anguli oris and that is a very important one to uh, look at oh great so roy says he uses the iwata and the vega 2000 both amazing airbrushes that's for sure okay so I'm gonna take our friend here and put him over here and so now with that knowledge of the depressor angulite oris I'm gonna make sure I have so now I'm working down here so I'm gonna make sure that my contour is protected down here and so you know, I really recommend just, you know, getting a, a good anatomy book on the muscles and the fat compartments of the face. And when if you're doing a lot of portraits, it will make your life so much easier and your portraits will have more dynamic likeness. Because if you're not looking for that, if you're not looking for that depressa anguli oris, most likely, no matter who you are, you're going to miss it. Uh, even if you do find it, you're not, uh, you're not comprehending what's happening. And it's going to be a lot harder or more difficult to get the nature of that very light gray shadow on the corner of the, of the mouth. And so it continues, right? It, it's throughout the whole portrait. There are these little, uh, little areas that, you know are going to be so important to capture so i'm going to blow it up on the corner of the mouth so you can see what i what i mean it's so little but it creates a real sense of three dimension to the forms 
uh, when you're doing a portrait, especially in, you know, maybe you have a low resolution image and uh, it doesn't really explain it as much as you would like to. You could even enhance it a little bit. So I'm going to come right here on this corner. I'm going to test out my airbrush here. And I can see that it goes down because the presser angle light auris goes down slightly. See that? See how I can grab that? And I don't want to overdo it, but I want to at least have knowledge and show that I do see that depressor angle light auris, right? And we have it uh, on this side over here. So let's move on over to the other side of her mouth and see if we could indicate that a little bit. Here I have a little bit of an area I'll fix and I'll do that using the white mixture of the detail white with a little bit of the uh, uh, of the wicked orange and I could just fix that little line there so uh, no problem. Mr. Dwayne, Mr. Air Todd, how's it going? Great to see you. Ryan, have a great night. Thanks so much for hanging out, sir. And I really appreciate it. And he's going to check out the progress in the reruns. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, Ryan. Always a pleasure. Mike, how's it going? Great to see you, Mintaholics. I just noticed you're here. How's everything? So uh, Mike says it's crazy how 3D she looks as if she's right there. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So, uh, Mr. Michael is all the way out in uh, California, not too far from Mr. Dwayne. So, that is cool. So, great to see you, Mike. Thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Dwayne, for coming here. I really appreciate you, too. And here, we're going to work on that depressor angulite auris. It's just so subtle, right? So, again, I'm going to just test it out i'm so glad mike's here uh and i'm just going to pull this down right here just a little bit i mean it's really like really light you know so air todd all the way from san diego great to see you sir see how just so subtle like really super subtle also we have the filtrum and in the filtrum, we have a little shadow there. And then, I mean, ever so slight here. I mean, I'm going to be about five inches away. And I'm going to get that super slight uh, filtrum. And then there's this shadow coming down here. You know, so her nostril is not a hole in the face. Uh, it actually gets lighter as it moves down, you know. Ah, definitely. So Mike says he has to show support. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so I keep making these work of art. I appreciate that more than you know, Mike. That's for sure. And also this cast shadow on the corner of her nostril, the wing of the nostril. It's a little soft. And, you know, with this with this sepia mixture, I can really nail that soft quality of it. And um, let's see. So that was the Presser Anguilite Auris. And when I'm going to come in with that white mixture with a little bit of the detail orange, uh, no, the detail white with wicked orange, I'll, I'll hit the light that's caused by that Depressor Anguilite Auris. Because where something is pressed down, it's going to create a light afterwards, right? So that's very, very important. Now, right here, we have, this is called the mental fat compartment. And it's called mental because it's on the mentalis of the jaw, which is the front of the jaw. And there's fat on there. And it's usually, you can look at your own chin right now, and you see you have this little golf ball-shaped uh, ball there. That's your mental fat compartment. And what happens is, is that, uh, there's something called the orbicularis oris, and I'll show you. Orbicularis meaning Latin for round, going in an orbit, and oris meaning uh, the mouth. So right here is would be your fat compartment, right underneath the uh, right underneath the mouth, 
uh, where the chin is. And then right around it is this obicularis oris, and it presses it down and creates this kind of parallel line. Uh, and I'll show you as I move this here. Let's see. Right here, you're going to see the slightest little straight line going across. Again, I want to make sure on my test paper that I'm getting the exact spray. Make sure there's no tip dry. So this is interesting. So what do you guys think of this? This sepia color, this detail sepia color, I haven't had any tip dry. And I've been working for an hour and 15 minutes. That blows me away. That's just really amazing. So great job, the chemists over at Createx. So those who might be hesitant to use the Wicked from a lot of things that are said about it, you really, it's really how you learn what it does and how to, how to make it work and understand it. It could do everything that the illustration line or the Golden can do. Plus, we can paint on a car, we can paint on a motorcycle because this stuff will just adhere and you clear coat it, it's just going to be wonderful. So uh, that's really great. So really, it's, it's, a, it's an exploration for myself and also it is really wonderful to see the capabilities of this paint. So I'm so glad that I... I picked it up and that, uh, you know, uh, Create Tax has been so amazing with the information and everything. So, and then right underneath her lip, there's a little bit of a shadow because the lip kind of hangs over the lower lip. And I just love it. She looks so gorgeous. So cute. And this comes down here. And this comes down here. Okay, so I'm gonna before I go ahead and come in with my uh, my my uh, detail white and orange mixture because to lighten it up you have to have the orange mixture in there, otherwise you'll get a blue shift, right? So before I do that, I want to finish working with this. So enriching some of these darks, and remember you don't want to worry about finishing it it's going to be finished when it's finished and but the thing is you have to we have to continue the process and if we don't do the process correctly that's when things go south right so just worry about making a beautiful painting okay so right under here we have this beautiful shadow which is on the under part of the lower eyelid and again always check here Make sure, because a lot of things could happen. You could be running low on paint, which it feels like right now. And no, I'm okay, but I'm getting low. And uh, that's true, Dwayne. Dwayne says, is it ever really finished? That's true. Pablo Picasso said uh, that a uh, painting is never finished, only abandoned. <laughs> I really feel that way. I think when I'm finished with a painting, I pretty much reach my limit as what I can do, right? That's how I feel. Uh, Mike says, the curse of all good artists. Very true, right? We always want to do more, Mike. That's so very true, sir. Good point. And so I'm, I'm worrying about this contour here. So I'm just going to put this over here like that and make sure we get that contour, which is great. Uh, yeah, that's so true, uh, Mike. Constantly looking for improvement. And Mike does uh, some great body work. He works on Ferraris and everything like that. And this, I can see the work that Mike does. It just, you know, he could take, uh, you know, a car that is messed up and just restore it. And to me, that's, that's art. That's sculpture. So definitely, you understand that. And let's bring this up and pull this over. So I want to get the shadow underneath the eyelid there. So 
So let's say if I go here and the sepia isn't quite warm enough, I can always glaze over it, right? I can always glaze over uh, that with some warm color. If the sepia is not quite right, that's easy to do. But what you want to do is make sure that we get that value, right? The value and the shape, which is very important. And uh, again, just keep looking uh, for, for the anatomy. Keep looking for the shadows and the edges. And right here, we, we have some uh, of the shadow of the retroorbicularis opalite back pad over here. Very cool. See how that really just working on that shadow of the retro obicularis ocalite fat pad right there really kind of le leads to her expression. It's a very uh, distinct expression. Oh, so Mike says, what was my inspiration for this piece? Yes. Yeah, so this is Sinead O'Connor, of course, and she passed away. And... Um, it was really sad. I've been a big fan of Sinead O'Connor, the singer, for a very long time. And uh, when I heard it, I heard it about three weeks ago. And uh, what happened? And uh, I think it was two weeks ago. And I was immediately struck that I had to do her painting. Then I realized when I looked her up more closely that her birthday is one day after my birthday right to the day so we're the same age and she's also irish you know and so I, I and i remember when i was young when uh i first heard her song uh her really hit song that she was just this incredible artist and who back then didn't have a little crush oh yeah it, it was very sad yeah so thanks mike and who didn't have a crush on Sinead O'Connor when she first came out <laughs> in like 1991 or something like that? Yeah, she was amazing. And she had a tough life. Uh, you know, she had a lot of emotional things going on. And I always felt for her, you know. And now looking into her life, I wish she had a happier life. And in my own way, by doing this portrait is just my own way just saying you know i hope she's finding happiness in heaven you know that's one of the reasons why i did this portrait is that i i wanted to give a tribute to her and you know her struggle in life and also her amazing successes you know and then to find out afterwards that we're one day apart you know as far as when we were born so that was really interesting Okay, so, so we worked on that, which is really cool. And uh, let's see, like right here, I think we have the shadow a little bit deeper on the outside of the lower eyelid right there. And very cool. And, oh, I hope so. Thanks. Mike says that she hopes she loves this. Me too. Uh, I really do. Thanks, Mike. So I was thinking that I was going to finish it tonight, but there's just no way. Uh, you know, you think you're done, right? And then when you start working on it, you're like, wow, I have more to do. I didn't realize that I had all that to do. And so now what I'm going to uh, work on is I want to darken this uh, underplane uh, where her neck is getting a shadow from her head. And let's see if we can do that again. I want to make sure that where I'm working, I protect those contours because if I don't, that means I have to draw it again. And I don't want to draw it again when I have it correct at this stage. So, you know, and going back to, um, you know, uh, with the cameo for Dennis, um, you'll learn how to make these stencils out of your own drawing. And that's going to help you to keep things clean. And as everyone knows, the, the pro airbrushes out there, keeping it clean is really crucial, right? Keeping things clean. So here I'm going to use a freehand shield 
I love these. My friend Kiva made this for me years ago. And uh, I've been using it ever since. So I don't know. You're out there somewhere, Kiva. If someone knows Kiva, I just want to say thank you. And I've been using this from the very, very beginning. So very, very cool. So I'm going to remember with your freehand shield, you want to cover what you don't want to spray. So that's what I'm going to do. And right here, there's a cast shadow. And you might have to move the magnets because the magnets will get in the way. And so, and take your time until you get the edge that you really want. And I'm just going to remember perpendicular and not parallel is, is my whole motto. Those who have been following my live streams forever know that's how I feel. And let's see, I come right here. And then there's a shadow that comes straight down. And what that is, is the tracheal area, right? The tracheal area is coming straight down. And I might come in with that detail smoke offline uh, to, to get a little richer. Because the sepia is nice, but on its own, it really doesn't have the punch to really hit those uh, little darker, darker lines. Brad says, well, I spent $160 on wicked paints and you'll have the entire detail line plus a few new wickets that you didn't know that is great it's not going to go to waste uh you know you're going to love it we'll work on it together and i'm going to be working with wicked almost exclusively on this live stream wednesday nights so we'll we'll get wicked together guys you know so i'm excited Again, I want to I want to go ahead and uh, eventually on the live stream do a gas tank or uh, a goalie helmet. So if anyone has one extra that they want to donate to me, let me know and I'll make sure that I do it with the Wicked Paint. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, so we'll be learning that together. So that would be cool. And then right over here, we have this uh, darker shadow pattern right here. So now I can go ahead and put that magnet here again so we don't get that under spray. So this is very important because we make this nice and dark. It will uh, make her, uh, her, her uh, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius much more gentle, much more feminine and bring out you know, her elegance, and that's what I'm trying to do. And again, I always like to thank God for the ability to do these live streams and to hang out with great people like you, uh, like you all, and uh, I don't take it lightly. It's uh, really such a privilege and an honor. And I just always want to thank God for that. Always, always praise the gift giver, not only the gift. And so that's pretty cool. So I'm actually working on, but what's interesting right here. So here you have the, the, uh, the mandible over here and you see how those shadows are pretty close ah uh, thanks mike mike says amen i appreciate that sir and brad uh brad is really doing good with those paints so that's exciting so here i went a little too too contrasty so i'm just going to come here i'm going to pump that trigger and i'm just going to lower that contrast and again that's going to make her bring out her elegance so when you're working with a female portrait you have to always remember that you want to make sure that you amplify their elegance as opposed to uh, you know emphasize it because it's just not attractive 
And you want to make the women happy because if they're unhappy, we'll find out about it. <laughs> And just bring in and just describe the zygomatic bone over here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to work on her lip. And I'm going to come in with the uh, orange and the white mixture. So I'm going to keep my airbrush filled with the sepia. And it's pretty low. So I'm just going to put a little more of this sepia mixture in there. What did I do with it? It's over here. Okay, it's really I'm so impressed on how this stuff mixed with the 4011. Wow, it's just unbelievable. So again, the star of the show is this the uh, detail sepia. Just really the star star of the show here. The detail sepia, the wicked detail sepia, really fantastic. So. Let's, uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to be working with this one, which is my customized Extreme Patriot 105. has a bigger cup. Everything else is exactly the same as the other airbrush. So um, what I want to do is show you what I'm going to use. And I'm already like more than halfway done with it uh, just for two paintings. This is called the, uh, the Wicked Detail White. And uh, really great stuff. And I'm going to mix that with a little bit of the Wicked Orange. I'm going to mix this up. And I'll show you my formula, which is really great. Is that I'll just take this. And I like to coat the bottom of this, right? This is my little formula. Just coat the bottom of it. Like that. And then... I'd like to take my Wicked Orange, and let me find it. Uh, the Detail Orange, I'm sure, will work just as well, but the formula is really working with the Wicked, right? Uh, the Wicked Orange. And now we'll just do two drops. Two drops of this. And you always remember what works, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with the 45th, I mean the 4011, and I'm going to do a one-to-one -one dilution. And of course, that's a guesstimate, right? You know, there's no way to really find out exactly. And I'm going to put one drop of the 4050 just to help adhesion. Just one drop. I put it in here well, a little bit more it's not too bad and then I'll take my trusty palette knife and I'm gonna mix this away from my painting and you really want to mix it because you want that that white to really dissolve that orange that little bit of orange is really hardly there but it's gonna combat that blue shift right and that's important. It combats that blue shift, and that's really going to help. And uh, so Dwayne says he uses the detail sepia more than any other besides the maybe white. That is so cool. So I'm finding out what you already know. <laughs> that's great. So that's cool. Uh, so cool. Yeah, that detail sepia. And you use that often, like, to kind of work on the shadows when you're probably in the, the last half of the painting as well and now I have see that that looks really white but that little bit of orange is going to help us uh, not get the blue shift so there's a couple of little errors here and that's what I'm going to use it for but also when I'm working in flesh like last week I'll use it to kind of calm down the colors and uh, assimilate them and then come back in with transparents after it's dry. And another thing, working with uh, working with uh, airbrush and acrylic, and then coming from oil paints, which dry long, long time, like sometimes days. It's wonderful how quick this stuff dries. So I mixed it really well. 
and we're going to use we're going to go ahead and use our scrap paper to really see you know and let's see so oh mike says what array of colors do you use to make the flesh tones great question so with this you know i'm always not a big fan of flesh tone colors because there's so many different flesh tones in faces but i do like when a company makes a flesh tone so wicked makes a detail flesh tone and i use that as a start mike and if it's lighter, I'll add white. If it's darker, I'll add sepia. But the great thing about the flesh tone is not to use the flesh tone as the color of the flesh, but a good starting point. So great question, sir. So now I have this and I'm just going to spray. So, and you see I'm getting, I'm getting really nice spray pattern. Now I'm going to get a lot more tip dry because it has white in here. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind uh, as I'm working. And so I'm um, just going to, so right here on her chin, let's take a look and see this corrective method in action. And it's always scary doing this, right? So I'm going to put that magnet close. and see how I'm correcting that area. And I always still, you know, you guys who are following me with my India inks and the pastels is the one second rule. You know, look for a second and then paint for a second. Keep your head in the game, right? And you see how I can correct that mistake. And I could also work on the light edges next to the dark, right? Which is important. And when you're working with the white mixture, you may have to raise that air pressure at the pack valve. That's okay. It's a, it's a different animal than the uh, sepia. So uh, keep that in mind. Not all colors play the same, right? They, they have their own little ways that their own rules right it's so important and uh so Dwayne says exactly he'll also mix it with a little purple and red to make almost black for shading very cool yeah that purple really uh i'm working on an oil painting and in the shadows i actually put violet in there and it really worked it goes against what you'd think like purple in the shadows Dwayne. and and uh Dwayne says purple and blue with sepia is a go-to for oil underpaintings that is so cool so so Dwayne uses purple blue and sepia what blue would that be more of an ultramarine or would that be like a lighter cobalt blue uh, that's a really cool combination I have to try that with my oil paintings as well uh, that is really wild okay so I'm just going to continue working and getting rid of this imperfection like i said the way i work oh dark blue very very cool like a prussian blue or an indigo very cool and uh so when i'm uh working on this like i said i don't use any kind of scratching so this is how i'll you know do my corrections and everything so now i'm going to uh let's work on her philtrum just above her her uh, mouth area and it may come out too light but that's okay because we're gonna glaze and remember a glaze is a darker transparent color over a lighter dry color and so that's what we're setting up here so right now I'm just going to find that edge and it might take a while before you find it but definitely be patient you'll find it and that's why this when uh, Kiva got me this one. She made it for me. It was just like, oh my God, this is perfect. I'm using it all the time. And you see how I'm pulling that up and I'm gonna lower that air pressure. 
even though it's going to be a little harder, more difficult, I need that control of that lower air pressure. So let's see how this goes. So hit and move, right? Don't stay in the same spot. There we go. So you see, I did get it. And again, we want to hit and move, hit and move. Because if we stay in that same area, it, it gets too blotchy. So I'm a decent distance away, maybe two and a half inches. And you see, I, I nailed it. It's not easy. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> but, you know, especially with this white and orange mixture, because it's counter it's counterintuitive but the way that acrylic paints works through the airbrush you have to have that leap of faith every time because again it's just totally counterintuitive see now we we have that and it looks really weird up close but far away it's gonna look okay and uh, we'll go right along this contour make sure that this is dry over here and before there was just this slightest imperfection that only I have seen but then again your client may see it when they're looking and say hey what's that you know and you're like oh no you know I thought you wouldn't see it so uh, always be mindful of that so that's thoroughly dry so and I'm going to work on the contour this light on the contour And it's also getting rid of that little imperfection there. So many things could happen in your painting, you know. Uh, you could accidentally scratch it or, you know, the cat goes on it when you're sleeping. Sometimes I don't know what my cat does at night. But one day she had all my cups knocked down. I think she was after a bug. And uh, that was interesting. There we go. So just getting rid of that imperfection there. And then remember the the uh, Depressa Anguli Auris, right? It's like a pillow where you put your head down, it goes in, but on the other side it goes out. And the same thing with the Depressa Anguli Auris, we're going to see that right here it comes out a little bit. And that's going to create a light. So you know there's always opposites so always look for the opposites so i'm just going to put that here see how we just created that little bit of right there there we go so see how how that comes out just a little bit right there and then it's a little bit lighter here and a little bit lighter on the other side of that depressor angleite orus there. And it's it's lightening, it's it's acting like white, so I may have to come back in with that flesh color to kind of uh, you know make sure it's not too chalky in color. And that's the great thing about me darkening this. So when I come in, uh, I have so when you darken the darks, you have room to darken up those midtones. If your midtones are too light a lot of times is that your darkest darks aren't rich enough right so those are things you have to really uh oh so mike says that uh he's going to call it a night uh tim have a keep up the good work and tell suki to stay <laughs> off the painting <laughs> i will do my friend uh mike always a pleasure i'm really touched you came to my live stream and uh god bless you and your beautiful wife and uh take care and i talk to you soon uh keep doing the great work with the uh, body shop and what you're doing uh mike worked on this ferrari he showed me and it's like oh my god that's amazing so cool so great such great work he does and let's see now we're going to work on the depressor angle like oris on this side because see how it depressed and then there's going to be a little bit of light here. So let's make that happen. See how I just did that just a little bit and we'll extend that light down. And 
Uh, looking forward to it, Mike. God bless and take care. And see how we're just... So with the depressor angle I Oris, there's a dark, but there's also a light. Like that pillow, right? Where you put your head, it goes in, but the other side, it goes out. So it's a real back and forth, you know, putting in the transparents and then going back with the, uh, with the opaque white and orange mixture. And as you can see, now her mouth looks a lot more... Uh, a lot more form to her mouth, right? It's very important to make those decisions like, okay, it's scary. I was happy the way it was, but I just want to be a little more happy. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this. Same thing here in the corner of her eye here. And that's really bright, right? So I'm going to knock that down, but I'll leave that on there. And so it's a little bright, and then I'm just going to do the same over here. So if you keep it on the light side, I mean, keep it on, you know, increase your distance and move, you won't get a blotchiness that I just got there. But it's easily fixed. And, you know, and kind of, you know, experimenting and doing something that you have to fix is really, it's worth it. It's worth bringing it to that next level, you know? So, very, very cool. And let's see what else we can do with this mixture here. And uh, maybe we could lighten up the uh, alar cartilage or the tip of her nose. So now, first I'm going to make sure I have a good spray. No tip dry. Preemptive check. See now, see I'm bringing up the, the tip of her nose there and then lightening up here a little bit, just a tad. And so if I'm further away, I'm going to be much more subtle in how much of the, uh, of the white mixture actually applies to her. And then right here, we'll just apply this very lightly. And I did promise I was going to work on her lips and... Uh, Let's go ahead and make that happen. So right in here. Now I want to make sure I'm getting good flow. Just a little bit lighter there. So I'm not liking the flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I have in my airbrush and I'm going to dump it out. And you know, I did not I did not strain it. And let's take a look and see what's in the airbrush. What's in Tim's airbrush? That should be a segment of this show. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in and show you all. And I'll lighten it. I don't know. Maybe if I focus, you can see that there was a little chunky thing. See that? And if it's there, right there, it could be in there. So what I like to do here is uh, sort of reboot. So... I am going to actually take a few moments and I'm going to clean this out thoroughly. So when I come in, because her mouth is really worth it, I don't want any kind of spitting or anything that's not perfect when I'm airbrushing, whether it's India ink or it's uh, Golden or Createx. Now that was my fault. I did not strain. So you need to strain that out. So I'm just going to be right back real quick, and I'm going to make sure my airbrush is 100%. Talks among yourselves, and uh, I will be right back, sir.
making sure that everything is really clear, uh, especially that nozzle. Just just running through uh, is not going to do it. And I'd rather make sure that everything is perfect. And that's what Brad was talking about. Like, if I see something that's not working, I'll take 10 minutes to really give it a good washing. Uh, it's not something that I, I think everyone should do. It's just something that I do. And it's important to me to make sure that I'm not having any kinds of clogs or anything in the nozzle. So when I find out it's not tip dry, or there's not something in that nozzle that I can just push out, I'll give it a really good cleaning. But I learned my lesson, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain it, and this is the uh, method that Mr. Scott McKay used, this little uh, method of here. Let me zoom out here. And I did mention it last week, these little uh, pipe screens. And you just take one of these and you put it right in here. I have a three quarter inch uh, ratchet right here. And that that's what I learned from him. Also, Dwayne's technique is really great too. And I'm gonna strain this. So this way I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am not uh, causing the trouble, right? Uh, and that's, oh, so Dwayne says that's why he has so many airbrushes. He sets it aside and grabs another one. Yeah, exactly. So you're doing the same thing, just in a different way, right? You're, you don't have time to struggle with an airbrush. Either you fix it or move on, right? That's exactly it, you know? So you don't have time to struggle with it because that just... And then again, even if you struggle with it, it just takes a, a couple of uh, blasts to just ruin your day, right? So, so I have this here, and I'm going to put it through here and uh, put it through the cup there. So it's coming right here. And we're going to see the culprit. And it's so cool. It really is uh, when all of this precaution really works. So now I have this really beautiful uh, strained. Uh, and now in here, I'll zoom in. I know this is scary over my painting, so don't do this. What not to do? And let's zoom in. Look what was in that. Oh my God, look at that. Do you guys see that? That would have been in my airbrush. So don't cut corners like I did tonight. Strain everything because the it only takes a few minutes to strain it and it makes a big difference. So that would have been in my airbrush. So that's really a good 
a good lesson for me and for everybody. Uh, oh, and Dwayne says that pipe screen will will also fit under the cap of the bottle. Oh, that's so cool, really. So you do it all, that is great. I'm gonna try that. And what I did is I rinsed out that, uh, that little uh, paint strainer so this way I don't have to, because you only get a hundred of them and I don't want to run out, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll reuse them when I can. So now I have this beautiful stuff that has nothing in it as far as little chunkies. And now I could work on that lip. And let's see, where's the top? So it's good that it happened on the live stream because we all learn. Don't cut corners like I did. Oh, now it's, now it's really nice. And what I'm doing is creating the light area of the lips and then I'll come in with the darker area. is working correctly and it is okay let's see absolutely doing exactly what I wanted to do and that's what it's all about and as you can see we are creating you know more body to her lip there and then when I come in with the darker red That'll really help. There we go. And just we come in a little bit more with that darker red to give more uh, more shape to that to that lower lip. Oh, so that screen is a uh, you can get them on uh, Amazon. There are these little pipe screens that go into pipes, and they work really well. So, and you get a hundred of them for like I don't know like eight dollars or so, which is really good. Uh, so definitely. Uh, I think there may be a link in the description. Uh, there should be. I think I did put a link in the description of this video. Okay. So we're getting to the end of today's live stream, which is great. Thanks so much, you guys, for hanging out with me. Now what I can do, so I'm pretty happy with what I did with the lip thus far. I may come in with some brush techniques, uh, regular paintbrush techniques, which is great. And uh, so I learned from Mr. Leahy when he did his paintbrush techniques over the live stream. It's just amazing what he did. And look how I can just soften that up. And then I'm going to take my sepia and see if I can calm this light here. That worked really well. So yeah, working the two airbrush method is really well, uh, really good. So, uh, so going back and forth really helps. And let's see. Let's uh, go ahead and work on her shirt. I know it's a minor thing, but I want to touch on that. Let me just move this over because I always will orient the uh, sh this shield 
so I'm covering exactly where I want. Try and have it cover everything is just too, too time consuming. And let's see, we'll just put this right here. And this will be the last thing that we do in today's live stream. And since I have the white, let's just make it happen. And make sure that's even. And put that right there. We'll use the smaller lower profile because we don't want the cast shadow thinking that. Brad, have a great night. Always a pleasure. Uh, and thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. And now we'll work on lightening up that t-shirt. There's a little bit of an imperfection. Let me show you what I mean, everybody, right over here. Right there, so. And I don't want to copy it, uh, cover it right away. You just take your time. It's easier to do several layers and one at a time. And where do you get the pipe screen? I, I'm going to send you, uh, I'll definitely send you the, uh, uh, tomorrow I'll get you the link, okay, sir? So you can purchase them. So yeah, it's really great. They work really well, as you can see. And let's see, I can use this paper here as a quick shield. So thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with me tonight. It's so cool. I had a lot of fun working on this portrait of the beautiful, talented Shanae. There we go. And let's take a look and see how this is looking. I just wanted to uh, fix the t-shirt there. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. And, and I like the t-shirt because it kind of, you know, gets that elegance. Hey, Mr. John Diekman, so glad you're here. How are you? Uh, yes, also your local uh, headshot, Dwayne. Definitely, if you have something like that around you, uh, Todd, that's definitely a great uh, bit of advice there from Dwayne. Thank you, sir. So, so cool. So, Dwayne has a lot of experience, so... He's so gracious to answer our questions and everything. So that is really great. So this is where we are. And uh, so not bad, right? You know, we're getting there. Thank you so much for your help, everybody. Thank you for the super chats. I mean, just amazing. Uh, just, uh, it was just incredible, today's live stream. Uh, the friendship and the support. I just want to say thank you so much. So thank you everyone for hanging out. So thank you, big thanks to Dave, the Bug Gregory, Brad, uh, Colette, uh, Dennis. I mean, for the super chat stickers, it really makes a big difference and really gives me encouragement that I'm on the right path. Sometimes you wonder, <laughs> you know, I wonder. But when you guys uh, give your support and friendship, it means the world to me. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you have any questions, instant message me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. And have a great weekend, everybody. Take care of yourselves.